Hi, everybody. Dan Oldman, Mike Beer. The DRF race of the day for Thursday, April the 25th, race number eight at Keeneland. We're going a mile and three sixteenths on the turf. First level allowance for three-year-old fillies. Let's take a look at this field. It's a big field, but we do have a strong horse to beat. And that's the number nine, Style Points, who drops into an allowance and adds Lasix after placing in two graded stakes for Christophe Clement. She's pretty good. She's got enough pedigree to, to handle the added distance here, Dan, and it feels like taking a step back out of a couple of grade threes probably works to her advantage here. This is a good field, though. I think a lot of different horses can win. Very strong feel as we take a look at horses 9 through 12. The 11, Tarnima, is a horse coming up from the fairgrounds for Brad Cox off of a maiden win. Florent Giroux takes them out. That filly has some upside. Here's the time form U.S. pace projector. One of the nice things about style points, the 9, is she's so tactical, Mike. You can basically put her anywhere within the context of a race. She can make her own trip. Can see her getting another good trip here. She's gotten base in, in each of her last three starts since her debut. She's gotten good trips in all those races. I can see her getting a good one here. Maybe the five makes the lead, Dan. I don't know if I necessarily looked at it that way. The one will be forward. I thought this pace projector has the four sort of way back in the pack. I, th I think you'll see that horse be a little bit closer to the pace. You stole my thunder. I think the four is going to be right up close to the pace, along with horses like Royal Wind Tour, certainly the five. Maybe even the one sassy princess will show some speed. Even the six, Midsummer March, who's stretching out after racing on dirt. But I do think the four will be closer to the pace. The 10, Janie Creed, has the fastest late pace rating from Time Form US. Keep an eye on that horse in the stretch. We'll start things off with Sassy Princess, who scored a maiden in this race, going a mile and an eighth. And this is a likable effort because it was her first start since October, Mike. It was a race where the pace held up. Horses close to the pace, like Sassy Princess, did well. But she finishes strong in the manner of a stayer. That's true. She runs fine in here. I didn't really know what to do with this race, Dan. Um, she ran fine in her two uh, turf starts at Saratoga last summer too. Landed in some good maiden races. She ran fine in those spots and she took a step forward there, but you're right. I mean, they went one, two around the track, basically. Um, nobody really made up any ground on them. And just to throw a little bit of an added thing in there, the favorite for Chad Brown loses her rider early in the race and just sort of opens everything up. So I, I don't know. I didn't really know what to do with that performance. She ran fine in there. Um, I'm not worried about her stretching out either. She's got plenty of pedigree. I'm just I'm not totally sold on her. Then I see the 12 to 1 morning line, though, Dan, and I'm like, I could easily use this horse. Certainly for Brendan Walsh and Flavian Pratt. The two is Raining Sugar for Junior Alvarado and Riley Mott, another horse coming up from Gulfstream Park. This one's switching from the Tapita surface there. She was third in this race, a race where she was wired going a mile and a 16th with the short stretch. She was able to save ground into the lane, Mike. She flattens out just a little bit late. The runner-up would come back and win a turf first level allowance at Gulfstream with an 84 buyer. Yeah, nice little inside run here from off the pace. And then she just kind of evens out at the end of this race. I don't like the way that she's finishing here. And that's a little bit of a concern for a filly who they, since they've stretched her out, she just, the finishes aren't there for a debut winner going five and a half. And since then, not a very strong finish. They're going to ask her to get even more ground this time. The three is Kamakazi Umagi, who was the winner of her career debut on turf at Horseshoe Indianapolis. The figure of that race came back woefully light, however, and in her three subsequent starts, she has struggled against winners. So she has a lot to prove, but she can improve, perhaps, in her second start off of a short layoff, of a solid enough layoff. The last race came on synthetic against a weak field, and she didn't do much. No, she didn't do any running there. She has that uh, October race uh, last year here on this turf course in Kamakazi with the number two in this race, Raining Sugar. They got wired that day, Dan, but I don't know, man. I didn't think either one of them actually ran that well in that spot. They both look like long shots in here, and I couldn't make either one of them. Trainer Brian Lynch sends out the number four, Hello Hollywood, who will be stretching out beyond seven and a half furlongs for the first time in her short career. I thought she got a very good trip when she won her second lifetime start, a maiden special weight at Gulfstream. Last time out in the Sanibel Island, though, she ran okay. She kind of lost some early position, and she was running on at the end. I agree with you. I mean, I, I I liked her maiden one anyway, two starts back, and she just broke really alertly from the gate that day and got forward, really good trip. And I just liked the way that she won that race. And then she comes back last time in the Sanibel Island, and I'm with you. I mean, that trip, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't perfect. And she really only got into the clear uh, for the stretch run there about, about the eighth pole. And I, I liked the way that she ran on at the end of that race. I think there's a good trip coming for her in here. I'm, I think she will get the added distance. Um, I, I like her in here. I don't know if I love the three to one morning line. I don't know if I'd take that price on her, um, but I could easily use this horse. 
The five is Royal Winter, and she'll be stretching out beyond a mile for the first time. This is only her third lifetime start. Her debut for Graham Motion was very, very good. She fell way off the pace and came with a strong run. Motion does not win off in first time out. We expect them to improve in their subsequent start, and she did. Graduating here, showing much improved speed. But watching this race, Mike, I'm really interested in your take, because going into the first turn, the pace setter blew the turn. It allowed Royal Wintour to make the lead. Uh, do you give her... Uh, you know, do you kind of take away from the performance because it was such an easy trip? Or do you say she was kind of forced into the race a lot earlier than expected because of that situation? Yeah, I didn't, I don't, I don't think I wanted to take anything away from her in there. Um, listen, it certainly, I thought it, I didn't think it hurt her at all. I thought it helped her. The trip really worked out and she was just always in a great spot there. The the thing I actually didn't love about the race, Dan, and I, I feel like maybe you and I aren't, aren't going to agree on this. I, this horse got clear so suddenly at the top of the stretch. And maybe that's a benefit to her. Maybe it's just because she's good and she accelerated. I just felt like it was because nobody was really running at that point. So she opens this big lead and she wins. I just wasn't, I wasn't really taken with her maiden win last time. I thought she ran fine in her debut, a race that she easily could have won with a really good trip. And she just got out finished at the end, but she got out finished by a pretty good horse. I don't know, man. I wasn't, I couldn't really talk myself into this horse, although I know she can win this race. I don't think she beat a very strong field last time out. I did like that she showed a lot more early interest. She goes out for Jorge Ruiz and Graham Motion, who won two stakes on the grass at Laurel on Saturday. Midsummer March is the number six. This one trying turf for the first time. A very expensive daughter of Mendelssohn sold for $425,000 as a yearling. Uh, this horse has won on dirt, a maiden in her second lifetime start then no match for kentucky oaks bound tarifa last time not a ton of grass in the close-up pedigree some further back yeah there's a little bit of turf in there if you go looking for it I, the Mendelsons, i'm not really sure what they're good at um we'll see dan this horse has one really good race when she broke her maiden to that great trip in that race but looked good winning her other two starts aren't that great um i guess at a price i wouldn't you know argue too hard but i couldn't talk myself into this one the seven and the eight come out of the same first level allowance at Tampa Bay Downs in early February. Sputnik, the seven, goes out for Mark Cassie. Uh, that race was a kind of a speed race. They ran one, two all the way around the track. Both Sputnik and Sacred Image had to rally from out of it. In the case of Sputnik, who was a pretty visually impressive debut winner going two turns over the Woodbine to Pita in her debut, it was her first start off a little bit of a layoff, but now she's been away two and a half months again. Yeah, I, I don't want to. I didn't want to be too hard on her for the last race because it was. You're right. It was dominated up on the lead. She got bumped at the start. Um, this didn't really do all that much in that race. It was pretty disappointing because she took money in that race. Um, her debut was good. Her her pedigree is versatile enough that I I still think it's more dirt. I, I'd be interested to see what happens when they switch surfaces. She could win here, but I didn't want to bet her. Sacred Image finished just ahead of Sputnik in that spot. She was also very visually impressive, winning her career debut for Chad Brown in a one-mile maiden special at Tampa Bay and might have just been hurt by the way that race was run last time out. The runner-up did come back to run third in a first-level allowance at Tampa with a 70 buyer. Did feel like she was maybe compromised a little bit by the pace last time. I also felt like going to the inside in the stretch for that race might not have been a great idea uh, for this horse. She, she still looks really green to me, Dan. She looked a little intimidated down on the inside when it got tightened up on her. And then she just didn't really run that well. Her debut, though, I thought that was a pretty nice looking performance. She still looks green to me, but it feels like there's potential in there. And she is bred to go long. Here is the horse to beat, though. The nine style points, a maiden winner down at Gulfstream, then second in the Swedish Chant, and then second in this race, the Florida Oaks, a grade three in early March. Uh, she ran quite well against a good horse. The third place finisher, a horse that she finished ahead of, would run third in the grade two Appalachian with an 83 buyer. I thought she got a hot pace to rally into in this race, Mike, but she seems really solid. Yeah, she's, she runs fine in here. She had a great trip in this race and had every chance to win. And listen, ultimately, she just wasn't good enough but it's a graded stakes race and they're taking a step back where they're here. She also got a great trip two starts back in the sweetest chant and just got nailed in there. Um, you know, listen, you can say she's had two really good trips on her own and didn't win either of those races. Um, but I just feel like, you know, I think you have to respect the fact that she's so handy. She gets herself into yeah. position. She's in the mix in the stretch. And now they're taking a step back in class Lasix on. And she has the pedigree to handle the added distance there. She's hard to poke too many holes in. 
Janie Creed is the number 10. This is our filly with the fastest time form U.S. late pace rating. And you can understand why her last race, she rallied from way out of it to score a maiden special weight going a mile at Turfway Park, although she really took advantage of a fast pace to get up that day. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll see how it all plays out. I, did, I didn't view her as the best closer in this race by any stretch of the imagination. And she did really take advantage last time in a race that set up perfectly for her on a different surface. And she's never run a fast race in her life. I think Tarnima has some upside potential, Mike, for Shadwell Stable and Brad Cox in her career debut. She didn't get away at all, and she ended up far, far behind and still came with a really good run to be third. She was no surprise at even money. Second time out, she was more professional. She won fairly easily. I don't think we've even gotten to the bottom of her just yet, and something tells me this distance is going to be just fine for her. I agree with you. When you watch her race, it looks like she'll go all, all day. Two really strong finishes in each of her first two starts. Uh, moving up here, facing a pretty good field. She's got an outside post this time, so we'll see what they can work out. But, uh, man, this horse, I don't I don't know if you're going to get the 8-1 to one on her. If you do, that's a great price. She is really dangerous in here. And completing the field is the lone two-time winner of the group. That's the number 12, Voice From Above. Both of those wins came on the Turfway Synthetic, including her most recent performance against $50,000 starter allowance. But I like the way that she kind of moved into the teeth of that pace and kept right on going to win. The seventh place horse came back to run third in a first-level turf allowance at Keeneland with a 71 buyer. This is her turf debut, but she certainly bred for it being a half to Carrick, who won the Secretariat at Arlington. Yeah, I, I liked it that she she made early moves in each of those last two wins. Just got on the move early, got herself involved, and then and then stayed on to the end. Those are both good performances. She's another horse, though, Dan. Never been on turf, never been this far, hasn't run a fast race yet. Tough outside post position as well. Before we take a look at our top selections, please click the subscribe button for the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel. Next week's Kentucky Derby Week. You don't want to miss a thing. Top pick time, Thursday race of the day. First level allowance, race eight at Keeneland. Mike, we're both taking small stabs against sort of the number nine in here who's the horse to beat. But tell me a little bit about Sacred Image. I just feel like she has a lot of upside, Dan. And I, I don't I don't feel like she got the, a great trip in her most recent start. Maybe that performance isn't as bad as it looks. She's going to have to sort of grow up a little bit and be way more focused. Um, but she, to me, she showed in both of her starts that she has a little bit of run in her and she's bred to stretch out. I just thought she'd be a good price in here and put her on top. The 11 was really the other horse for me. I'm, I'm afraid of that horse. Royal Winter did get a good trip against kind of a weak field last time out at Gulfstream Park. She did take a step forward, though, second out for Graham Motion. I think she can be forwardly placed. I think there's enough pedigree for her to get this distance. I'll need a little bit more, though, than 4-1. to 8-11, 4 for Mike. 5-9, 4-11 for me. It's our Thursday DRF race of the day. Best of luck.